I'm gonna show you how to turn one of these standard 15 amp outlets into one of these 15 amp GFCI outlets. Now there's a few reasons why you might wanna replace your 15 amp standard outlet with the GFCI outlet. Now, one of those reasons might be that you've recently found out that in basements, it is now required to have GFCI outlets, or you found that one of your circuits in your house is not GFCI protected on the outlet. Okay, we've made it over to the outlet that we need to swap this out for the GFCI. Now, step one is always to remove power from the circuit. Now, there's a few ways you can do this. I've got a whole video. Check that out right there. I show you how to find the circuit breaker that goes to the outlet. What I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna use my Klein Tools RT390. It shows the voltage right there. So once I turn the circuit breaker off, I will lose my voltage there and it should say open hot. And of course, I'm going to check both receptacles just to make sure it's not a switched outlet. Okay, I've located and shut off the breaker to the outlet. Now, as you can see on the Klein Tools RT390, by the way, I'll throw a link in the description on how to pick one of these bad boys up for yourself, worth every penny, but let's move on. I do see open hot now in zero volts right here, so I know that I have properly removed power to this outlet. Again, check both receptacles just to be sure you're not on a switched outlet. And I still have zero and open hot, so I am good to start working and replace this outlet right here. We'll go ahead and remove the cover. Now that we have the outlet exposed, we can go ahead and remove the two mounting screws and pull it out from the wall. Now you can see that we do have two black hot wires, two white neutral wires, and our bare green ground wire right here. Friends, sorry for the brief interruption, but if you could do me a huge favor, throw a comment below. It does something to the algorithm. It pushes our video out to help so many more people. I truly, truly appreciate it. Now back to the video. The next step is to just remove all of your wires. Now, as you can see, these have been backstabbed, which I don't prefer using that method is, is acceptable, but I feel like over time, these connections will come loose. I prefer to use the terminal lugs right there. Now, because these are straight backstabs, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to remove these without cutting them and having to strip. Now, to remove the backstabbed wires, you'll see it has a little slot next to each wire. You're simply gonna find a really small flathead, plug that in to the hole, and simply pull the wire out. It's really that easy. So we'll go ahead and pull all four wires out. And of course, the green screw there is for our bare ground wire. Simply remove that. Okay, and we have removed our standard outlet. And in comes our GFCI. Now, if you don't know, the GFCIs come with a test button and a reset. I'll show you a few ways to test this after we install it. Okay, now there is one huge difference between the standard outlet and our new GFCI. Now the difference is on a standard outlet, you have a tab right here that connects the top and bottom. That's why it doesn't matter which black wire goes on which brass terminal. You can have them either way on a standard outlet. On a GFCI, you do have a specific place that these terminals need to go. So as you can see, you have a brass terminal right there. We also have another one underneath this tape. On the back of a GFCI, you can see where it says line right there. And underneath this yellow tape right here, it's going to say load. Now the line is your incoming power and that's the next step. We need to figure out which one of these black hot wires is our incoming power. Now the load side underneath this tape is going to be the wires that are going to send power to the outlets downstream. So that's the load. The line is incoming, load is out downstream. Now the next step is going to be the most dangerous step in this whole process as we do need to figure out which one of these wires is the hot and which one is going downstream towards the other outlets. That's a very important step to figure out which one is which so you don't wire it up backwards. You don't wanna do that. The reason why this is dangerous is because we're going to have to turn power back on. That is why you wanna make sure that you have no children, no pets, no fish, no anything 
near these wires because we're gonna go turn the circuit breaker power back on. The other thing is you wanna make sure you have these wires properly separated because you don't want them touching together and tripping the circuit breaker. It's only gonna make the process even longer and more difficult. So let's go turn power back on and we'll come find out which hot wire is which. Okay, folks, now we do have power to these wires right here. So you definitely don't want to touch any of these wires with your hands because you could get shocked or electrocuted. So what I've got here is the Fluke 1AC A2. Now this is a non-contact voltage tester and I'll show you what it does. We'll power it on. As you can see, we have our pulse indicator that it is powered on. When we bring it towards the hot wire, it does stay lit up red like that. If it's not a hot wire, there's no power, it'll just continue flashing. And you'll see this hot wire, this black wire here, it just continues flashing. So we know that this is our line. This is our hot wire coming from the circuit breaker and this one right here, because it does not have power on it, is going to be our load. This is going to the next outlet. We'll just check them all, just to make sure everything's wired correctly downstream and we don't have any other power. But you'll see this is the only black wire that has power on it. So we know, again, this is our line. We'll separate it so we don't forget which is which. The rest of these have no power on them. So we'll go shut power back off to the circuit breaker. Okay, I've made it back from shutting power off. We're just gonna double check that you actually have removed power. and. You can see that it is still flashing on our line hot wire. So we do know that the power is back off, safe to work on the circuit. Okay, the next step is we need to wire in the GFCI outlet itself. I always start with the line side, which is the top, usually the top. Just double check, make sure it does say line because occasionally they will put the line at the bottom. Leviton always puts a yellow piece of tape over the load, so it's pretty easy to identify line and load. Now remember, the brass screw is always for the hot. The silver screw is always for your white neutral. White, silver, black brass, pretty easy to remember. So I like to go ahead and put my line on the brass first. That way I get it out of the way and I don't get mixed up which wire is which again. Now with a normal standard outlet, I always recommend using your J-hooks around your terminals. On a GFCI outlet, it's a little bit different. It does have a terminal lug there, but it has a plate and that's where you're gonna shove the wire right in between the two metal plates and then fasten it down with the screw. It's really simple. So I've pushed the other wires out of the way and I'm gonna insert the black wire underneath the plate there, not around the screw on the GFCI, but underneath that plate. Keeping pressure on the wire so it's fully inserted. And we want that really tight, but not so tight you break anything. Now, I always like to give the wire a tug just to make sure that it's not gonna come out because you do not want loose wires and outlets. That's what could cause flickering or power fluctuations. So now that we've got our line hot wire installed, the rest is simple. It's just plug and play for the rest. So we can go ahead and remove this yellow tape here. Leviton always puts that yellow tape just to make sure you remember that one of them's load, one of them's line. So we'll go ahead and push in our other black wire. Now sometimes these terminals are tight and you have to loosen them. Okay, and you can see that we do have some bare wire sticking out a little bit too much for my liking. I'm gonna cut the end just a little bit. Okay, and that's much better. We'll go ahead and tighten that hot wire, give it a tug. It's not going anywhere either. Now it's time to wire up the white neutral side. We'll give the white side a tug. Everything is pretty dang solid. Okay, but we cannot forget our ground wire or this will not function properly. We'll go ahead and insert that the same way, just right underneath. Give the ground wire a tug. You just wanna make sure everything's tight. Now I like to just inspect everything again, make sure everything's tight. Nothing is touching, no bare metal showing. And then you can simply accordion your wires back in and push your box in. You wanna get it so it's flush there. So when you put your cover on, it lines up perfectly. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and mount the outlet back into the box. You want it pretty much lined up and flush with the wall. Okay, we'll put our cover plate back on.
Okay, and the final step is I'm gonna show you how to test these GFCI outlets, which you should be doing about once a month. So before we can do that, let's go flip power back on to the outlet. Okay, friends, we've turned power back on, and as you can see, I do have a green LED. Now, not all GFCIs will have this, but the newer Levitans do. Also, it's going to be tamper-proof. Kind of hard to see, but it's got a cover in there. All new outlets have to have tamper-proof receptacles here in the US, so make sure that you don't buy one without being tamper resistant. Okay, now on your monthly check, you've got a button labeled test right here. All you have to simply do, press the test. This is going to just pop out slightly. We have lost our light right there. So we do know that we have lost power to the receptacle. Another way to test it is with our handy RT390 here made by Klein Tools. This is a really, really nice outlet tester. And as you can see, I've got zero volts and open hot. So we know this outlet is in fact powered down after we've hit our test button. Now we'll go ahead and hit the reset button. You can see right there that the green light is back on. We also have regained our voltage. It does say energized and correct wiring. So we do know that it is reset and it's holding voltage. We'll go ahead and check both receptacles just to be certain. And one more awesome feature of this Klein Tools RT390 is it does have the built-in GFCI tester. So we'll go ahead and just hold that down for about three seconds. It did trip. We lost our LED in the bottom right corner and the meter itself says trip successful. It gives you your pre-trip voltage. It gives you the uh, trip time, 106 milliseconds. It gives you your trip current at eight milliamps. Okay, and I've reset it and you can also use the 30 milliamp tester on these GFCI circuits as well. So the same thing, you just hold that down three seconds, it trips the GFCI itself. It does say trip successful again, 31.7 milliamps, 51 milliseconds, and it had 121 volts before. So this thing will also test the GFCI for you. So that's the other way that you can really check your outlet. Make sure that you've done your wiring correct. That's where this RT390 comes in so handy because you can plug a light or some other power source into it. It may appear that it is working, but you could have some wires reversed. It may still work, but it could be dangerous and not correctly wired. I highly recommend picking one of these up because it will easily tell you that your wire is correctly installed. If you don't want to spend the money on the RT390, this is the Klein Tools ET310. It's primarily a circuit breaker finder. This is the transmitter. This is the receiver. This right here is also a outlet tester and GFCI tester. So the ET310 is also nice because you can also use this to test your GFCIs monthly as well. So let's try this out. So we'll plug it into the outlet there. You can see that I have two green lights there. According to the chart on the top, that does mean that it is correctly wired. Now, the other cool thing about this ET310 is if I hold that button, it immediately trips the GFCI, just like hitting the test button. I have lost my lights there and I have lost my green LED. Now I like to check both receptacles. So you can see I've got my two greens. I did reset it, so I have power again. As soon as I hit that, it trips. I lose my power. I've lost my green LED. So the Klein Tools ET310 is also a great option to go ahead and check your outlet wiring using the chart and also to test your GFCIs. And that's it, friends. We have successfully replaced a standard outlet with a GFCI. Hopefully you see how easy that can be. It doesn't have to be a daunting task that you have to hire somebody else out for. As long as you're comfortable with regular outlet wiring, you can also do a GFCI, it's as easy as that. Friends, if you enjoyed this video, I really appreciate you watching and check out this one right here. I picked it out just for you and I know you're gonna love it. And again, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel right over here. It does something to the algorithm. It pushes it out so we can help so many more people. I truly appreciate it and I will see you on the next one.